start off by saying that I submitted the name of this talk a few weeks ago. And since then, I've kind of been waiting and gathering trepidation because I suddenly realised that I'd be having a conversation with a room full of people who were probably very passionate about code. <laughs> so I'm going to ask you all to just bear with me on this one. Um, what I wanted to talk about today was ultimately um, how you move from being a hands-on developer into a management position and how you let go of being so close to the code and what the benefits are, what, what actually will actually drive you to make that jump. <laughs> so, how on earth did I get here? I thought I'd tell you a little bit about myself. Um, I would like to say that I'm an interesting, interesting person, probably not, but Ultimately, I started my career um, probably where everybody else did, which was at the age of about 16, 17, when my careers advisor said to me, what do you want to do when you, uh, you know, leave and go to university? And I went, play video games? I'm not sure. Um, but luckily, I, I jumped onto an A-level IT course. But you know what, I, I quite enjoy locking my brother out of the family computer, there's got to be something there. So, I jumped onto the sale of IT course and I started raising through coursework. Now, it was the generic type of coursework where you work very heavily with Excel spreadsheets and the marvel that is Microsoft Access. Um, now, luckily for me, my teacher must have seen some kind of spark of interest in me. Now, I was a sullen teenager, so I don't know where he saw that. But what he said to me was that you've, you've rad, run through your sad database project. Why don't you now try and expand it? So what you can do, and I'm going to say something that everybody's going to groan at. I started to make a very basic password login system in VBA. Now, I'm not that old, but that's where I started. And I have to say, I was absolutely hooked on coding from that. So I started to work. I was building little 2D platformers. And I ended up going to university to study games programming. So I tied up what I really enjoyed and then what I found from, as I say, my wonderful IT teacher at the time. So after university, I then got a job as a developer. Um, and absolutely loved it. I had a fantastic senior dev who let me break everything, wasn't too annoyed about it, taught me how to fix it again. Um, and I fell in love with development as a whole. But I was working in quite a small team. And I think as all of us have done, if you've worked as a developer or if you are continuing to work as a developer, you start to notice little niggles. Now, whether this is niggles in process, whether it's the age-old conversation of delivery versus you've got 10 minutes to get this out team, you start to think, you know what, there are some things that we can improve around this. That's not necessarily around you know, improving the code. It might be around the way that we're approaching things as a team. So it might be process, it might be communications, those kinds of things. Now I fell into a bit of a black hole, which was project management for a short amount of time. Um, <laughs> Now, it taught me a lot. I can tell you that. It taught me a lot. I was still coding at the time. I was also project managing. And what it allowed me to do was learn about things like stakeholder management, which is fantastic. Once you've got your head around that, you've worked out kind of business needs, roadmaps, those kinds of things. It really, really helps you as a developer to see the wider picture. The problem I had was I hated spreadsheets. But what I did was I thought, well, I've really enjoyed working closely with the team. I really, really enjoyed working closely with actually building the project, seeing them come to life. And I kind of found that where I was falling into was this development manager slash engineering management role. So that's where I got to. And I'm currently an engineering manager at a company called Bud. So what is an engineering manager? What do we do? Now, engineering managers are slightly magical and mystical. Normally, when you talk about management in a kind of developer's career, what you would naturally expect to do is to progress to something like a tech lead or a principal engineer. You'll be working on code a lot of, time, of your time. You'll then move to a very senior position, and it might be that you then become sort of a person that gives technical insight. You'll work with management to sort of convey ideas. You'll look at wider architectural builds, and you'll mentor the team. The path of the engineering manager is slightly different from that, insofar as I am hands off the code, hence the naming. So engineering managers do look different in every company. I found that the other engineering managers that I speak to do tend to have slightly differing roles. So it may be that they're different in other companies. But for me, what I do is although I'm hands off the code, I do work on a wide range of responsibilities. And that main responsibilities is making my team's life easier. 
So there's a lot that can fall under that category. Um, it could be that I'm working once one with the team to understand what their needs are, what they might want from career progression, what they need on a day-to-day -day basis. It might be that I'm working on a slightly more Scrum Master-esque type role. I'm looking at kind of ways of working, the structure, how we're sort of having efficient talks. To stop people throwing 50,000 meetings into the calendar. Let's have one that works, team, one that works. But ultimately, my job is to listen and manage the stresses of a team. And that is absolutely crucial as an engineering manager. So as I say, it can be very different across companies. But for me, it takes on a really wide range of responsibilities. So the big question, the one that we get into about this talk, how do you keep your hands off the code and your passion for tech alive? The key thing for me when I was talk, looking at this talk was keep learning. So there are always opportunities to keep learning. And the chances are, if you're passionate about tech, that passion will never die. You'll always want to follow the next trend. You'll want to be looking into what's coming up next. So outside of work, I still code. I still attend growth cons. I'm, you, know, you could actually continue your studies. A lot of companies will allow you to have learning time in your role, which is fantastic. So there's no reason why you cannot keep coding. But inside your role, you're going to have so many opportunities to be on the ground with the team, which means you are always close to the tech. You may not physically be writing code, but it's on screen with you all the time. You're looking at products and projects as they grow. And the big bonus that I found is that you suddenly have this bird's eye view. So going from working on perhaps, you know, this your team set of Jira tickets, you're then looking at the overall company architecture and you are able to see sort of a bigger picture. You see how things fit together. You've got a much, much broader view of your company's tech, which is a fantastic experience to have. You also can start to see dependencies between teams. You'll be able to work with a really wide range of engineers. Luckily for me, I get to work with engineers across lots and lots of different parts of the company. So it might be front end, back end, it might be platform. So actually, rather than just working on my bit of code, I now get to work on a much more sort of diverse level, which is fantastic. Now, I continued to write code right up until I hit the engineering manager's role. I kept up coding. I've done a couple of courses here and there, but ultimately what I want to say to you, the truth is, if you love tech and you love coding, that passion will stay alive, whether you are doing it professionally or not. And I think by having that sort of wider view from a company perspective or from an engineering manager's perspective, you're still close enough to the tech to not miss it. So skills plus plus. I wanted to talk about the fact that when I was moving into management, my big question was, but won't I be bored if I'm not coding? I'm not, I promise, I'm really not. And the reason is, although one thing is the coding skills will be a fantastic base and a huge leg up and understanding of the team. So you'll find that there are lots of skills that you can transfer from coding into management. So if we have a look at some of those skills, we are problem solvers as developers. And one of the things that I have to do on a day-to-day -day basis is work with the team to navigate blockers. And it's understanding where the problems lie, how we go about it, how we communicate them, and how we get past them. We can also use our experience of understanding builds to help with planning, to help with communicating. It might be that you're talking about company roadmaps. It might be that you're looking at a longer project. But ultimately, you'll be able to take your knowledge and experience, work with the team to sort of get, move that thing forward. Now, one of the main, main things that I really enjoyed about taking forward from coding was translating technical conversations to non-technical people. Now, everybody in this room would have been phoned up by a family member saying, can you fix my printer? You work in tech, don't you? And actually, on a day-to-day -day basis, I work very closely with the team, but I also work on that management layer to communicate what the team is working on, how the team is working on that thing. It might be that we're talking about deadlines. It might be talking about approach. But that technical understanding allows you to actually really be a conduit between teams and management. And I think one of the final skills that I really appreciated from, from my coding experience was working with other developers on career progression. So we will all have had our own progression. I've talked to you a little bit about mine. And I think we're able to work with team members day to day and say, well, what do you want to do? What do you want to achieve? And having that understanding and kind of have gone through some of those steps yourself, you'll be able to guide at least the more junior developers with their career progression, which is fantastic to see and it's immensely rewarding. 
So by the team for the team, one of the other things that I was really worried about, about turning into a manager, was that I wouldn't be part of the team anymore. So first of all, as an engineering manager, you are 100% still part of the team. You will be on the ground with the engineers every single day, doing what you love, close to the tech, and very much part of the team. You're there to encourage the team. You're there to help to drive the decisions and helping navigate. Um, I think one of the brilliant examples is, is the fact that you'll come to a conversation with engineers who have perhaps got three very great solutions to a problem. Now, as developers, we're naturally very passionate about our solutions. We work very hard on them. We can be quite protective. But if you get three developers in a room and you're trying to move to a, a solution, it can sometimes be hard to get people to compromise and work together. Now, if you've got that skill and you're able to walk into a room and say, OK, maybe let's jam this out, and we're able to put something together and come to a solution, I think that's absolutely fantastic to see. One of the things you do have to recognize as an engineering manager is that you are working with subject matter experts. And what I really enjoy is that I'm working with people who know so much more than me. And there is so much I can learn from my team. I don't know it all. So I suppose the way I see myself as an engineering manager is if you imagine um, a plane taking off. So your team know how to fly the plane. They've got the skills. They've got everybody on board that they need. You're the engineering manager, and you'll find yourself on the runway with essentially light-up flags just to help them get off the runway. You're helping the team to move in the same direction. The team have the skills. You're there to guide, you're there to help, and you're there to support, which is the main thing. So mentoring and leadership, another big part of my role as an engineering manager. One of the things you will learn is that the manager's badge does not come with a shiny leadership hat. It's not something that you're given. It's something that you have to learn, and it's something that you will learn naturally if you're working really closely with a team. You'll learn the team's working style. You'll probably have your own ways and means of leadership. And I think one of the things that we have to recognize is that even if we, we are natural leaders, we all still so need to keep working and sort of growing in our role as leaders. And you will absolutely be supported by the team to do that if you work well with them. The other thing that you'll have coming from a coding background is empathy for the team. And I think that's absolutely crucial. You'll understand the struggles, and that will help you to be more pragmatic. And it will help you to be more of a sort of, I suppose, understanding leader of a team. Ultimately, being a good manager is about continually working on your leadership and recognizing that supporting individuals to succeed in their goals is the number one. But mentoring, actually, anybody on the team can be a mentor. It's not down to just you to be a mentor. You can encourage your team to work together to support the other team members, no matter what level they're on. It may be that they're senior, it may be that they're junior. Actually, everybody can, can share some kind of knowledge or experience with each other. And it can go both ways. As I said, there is so much that I can learn from my team on a day-to-day -day basis. And sitting and listening and understanding that is, is going to be huge for you to grow as, as a leader. So I'd like to end my talk with a quote from one of my heroes. I'm sure most of you will know that this is from Spock. Um, so the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. So ultimately, a happy team is more likely to be a successful team. And giving your time to support and encourage will allow your team members to grow. But also, I find that giving my time to the team actually allows me to reflect at the end of the day and just go, you know what, we moved this much further forwards, but isn't that fantastic? Actually, I've seen that one developer achieve one of his goals, and isn't that amazing to see? Or maybe we just got past that blocker that we've been grounding at for a week, but we've worked together and we've really achieved something, which is, is brilliant. You may have to put down the code professionally as an engineering manager, but that doesn't mean that you can't find an absolute wealth of knowledge, challenges to face, and new skills to keep you busy and engage with, especially when you're working with engineering teams. And I think ultimately, when I say the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few, what I mean by that is helping engineers to be the best that they can makes the hands-off role absolutely worthwhile every day. So thanks very much, everybody. Thank you.
wrong, but do you have time for like a couple of questions? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. This is the first time we're doing this. Um, <laughs> teams are relatively small. We work on a sort of scrum-based um, sort of structure, so we're looking at around 12 people, 10 people at max in a team, if that answers your question. Um, so I'm actually, I have the benefit of working alongside two other managers um, on my team. And I work very closely with the tech lead and the product manager, which is fantastic. So actually, we balance out the responsibilities really nicely. So um, what that means is that we've got a very skilled technical um, lead that might be very senior in their profession. And then we've also got um, a, a product manager who works very closely with road mapping, um, understanding sort of the priorities. So we've got a very balanced, almost a trio, managing the team together. So from my perspective, although I'm working very closely on sort of process, I'm working very closely with the team on their development, and I'm working closely sort of with ultimately guiding the team to make sure that things are structured, the team is happy, and they're able to achieve their goals. Actually, I've got the benefit of working with two other fantastic managers to help me do that job. Yeah, I know. <laughs> um, how do you manage to have the IC's goals that manage with the company goals? So ultimately, what's fantastic about career progression is it's very specific to each person. I think understanding the needs of each of your team members is immensely important. And I think all you can do is spend the time, talk to them, work with them very closely to understand how they can sort of move forwards in their own career. Now, ultimately, we want them to move forwards with the company as well. And being able to be on the team, we can understand and recognize sort of the needs of the team, the needs of the company, and tie those in with career progression. But the other thing that we don't want to do is we don't want to add glass ceilings to people's progression. Because actually, if a developer came to me and said, you know what, I work in front end, but I've got a massive interest in architecture. Well, that, that will actually make them more diverse engineers. So although it's not specific to their role as a front-end engineer, if you can gain more of an understanding of architecture, you become much more well-rounded. So I would say that not putting a cap on things is, is immensely important. I think I have for one more question. I mean, did you put your hand up? <laughs> go, 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 go. <laughs> uh, the way that you measure success is that you ask for immensely honest feedback. And feedback goes both ways. And I think, you know, you cannot progress and be a good manager if you're not open and honest about your own flaws. And I think working very closely with engineers and having those open conversations and saying, how do I help you better? How do I kind of approach this in a different way? Is there anything that I can do to improve how I'm taking this forwards with you? That's how you actually improve yourself, I think. Cool. Well, thanks again, Amy.